what do you think that says to men and their value where the only way they get sex is if they pay for it? How do you think that makes a man feel in terms of his intrinsic value that the only way I deserve to be loved is if I buy it? Just because they don't realise what they're doing doesn't mean that they're not doing it. Who's they? Men. <laughs> We're the same person. We're just in different bodies at different times. I believe in positive masculinity. I don't spend much time with people who have a massive problem with men. I'm really looking forward to meeting a professed man-hater or somebody who wants to take me to task over that. I'm here to debate a macho, toxic male. I'm anxious that he'll just stereotype me and see me as this hysterical woman, angry feminist, social justice warrior type person. He'll just want to shut down everything that I'm saying. Let's go meet this Andrew Tate dickhead. <laughs> Could you just tell us what does toxic masculinity mean to you? I don't believe in the concept of toxic masculinity. I just don't. As long as you're not standing up against sexism, you're perpetuating okay. patriarchy. So for me, toxic masculinity is like the idea that men can't express more vulnerable emotions and this anger that they hold within themselves that they then end up exploding outwards. It can breed hatred towards women. The, the way you worded that, I think is absolutely part of the problem. There's two conversations here. There's a societal conversation and mm. then there's individual men. And actually, when you've got 94% of the prison population being men, when you've got 86% of the homeless population being men, when you've got suicide rates as 75% men, I struggle to see how this system is truly su is supporting men. I'm not that. saying that they're conscious of it. And just because they don't realise what they're doing doesn't mean that they're not doing it. Who's they? Men. Like I, all of them? Definitely. OK. Men miss out on so much because of the amount they work, yet it's looked at that we're getting the good end of the stick. We're, yet we're dying of heart disease, we're chronically obese, we're unhealthy, we're unfit, and, and we're literally working ourselves to death, generally. But because we earn more money, it seems like we're winning. I think you're agreeing with me more than you think you are. I don't get why it's called toxic masculinity, and I don't get why it gets led at the feet of they, as in men. I don't, mm. I, I, no, I don't understand that. But Fidel, men have created this system you're talking about. Women do worse in the world that we live in the whole Saudi Arabia example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Women aren't allowed to drive yeah. there. Women have to get a male guardian's permission if they want to leave the country. But actually, here in the West, it's really fucked up towards women as well. The really insidious sexism that happens every day on such an unconscious level that is mm. really dangerous towards women. One example is women getting free entry into clubs. <laughs> I really hate that right? because that's commodifying women. And yeah. actually, the only reason women are getting free entry to clubs is so that men go to those clubs because they want to sleep with the women. These women aren't being hypnotised and being told to go in there for free and have the drinks of men, you know. They spend to get in the club. Whether they get sex at the end of the night or not is not their decision. What do you think that says to men and their value, where the only way they get sex is if they pay for it? How do you think that makes a man feel in terms of his intrinsic value that the only way I deserve to be loved is if I buy it. If you listen to a woman and you give her love, then you'll get sex. These don't look anything like the little mushrooms you get out in Somerset. We open the direction of the west. to the 
It's a comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on toxic masculinity now? I think the kind of like divisiveness of these topics is, I think that's what's set, I'm, I'm going again now, you know. It's definitely like made me feel really emotional, like the sadness of it, you know, the triviality that we're all running around bickering about our differences. Um, and trying to get each other to see everybody else's perspective and stuff like that. And so much time is wasted doing that. Mm. When you smile at me, I realise that you get it. <laughs> You're another iteration of my friends and family back home. Mm. You're just them in another body. And you're also me in another body, but like at a different stage of my journey. And also you're going to be me as well because time isn't a thing. <laughs> the whole gender thing isn't a thing either because regardless of what body we're in right now, we're the same person. We're just in different bodies at different times. I think I had quite a big kind of clarity moment on that one. Mm. It was quite defined about masculine and feminine and stuff and yeah gender not so much but certainly there was elements of masculine and feminine this understanding of beauty and strength and how it all works together and how we all have that mix of of kind of both and it all came undone and then I had to put it back together again so it's not about stopping what I'm doing but definitely change changing the way the way that it's done and the language that's used around it and the, the mm. type of conversation that I think we should be having on the subjects that we're talking about. We need to just look at it from a, a, a higher perspective. Mm. It felt like we were on these two parallel journeys, like different ones, mm. but very, very similar. It felt like we were in it together, didn't it? Yeah. yeah definitely. I felt like you were really looking out for me. I hope. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I was really conscious of the fact that I'm so much younger than you before. I, I guess I felt a bit patronised. Yeah. That just melted away. I was like, nothing's awkward, nothing's embarrassing. What even does it mean to feel patronised? Mm. Because there isn't that separation. Everyone's just at a different point. And, and I felt your kindness. And I realised that you weren't being patronising, you were just being patient. And I just realised it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to worry about anything. It's all going to be okay. Not going to be, it all is okay right now. Fear is just an illusion. Death doesn't exist. Money doesn't exist. And life's a comedy show. Are women worth drivers? <laughs> Oh, women worst drivers. I think. Ah, <laughs> shit, man. No, come on. <laughs> <laughs>